We start by defining sine, cosine, and tangent with a right triangle. But what if we extend that definition? What if we go a little bit further? What if we think about it on a coordinate plane? What's going to happen? Well, in this video, we're going to take that adventure together. We're going to take a look at what's going on with our trig ratios when we put them on a coordinate plane. Here we go. So let's say we have some angle, right? And this is the terminal side of the angle. So start to the x-axis will be a standard angle. Opens counterclockwise, call this theta. And I'll put some point P on the terminal side. So this is P right here. I'll have some x value and some y value. Now at first, one of the first quadrants, this is all very comfortable because if we just drop a perpendicular right here, we can see if that's a right angle, well, this would then be our right triangle. Right? We see this right triangle, and to get to that point P, we can call this distance X and this one Y. We can call this R for the hypotenuse, and then we can say, well, okay, look, we've got a, we've got a right triangle. It's on the coordinate plane. Yay. Sine of theta equals opposite over hypotenuse, so Y over R. The cosine of theta equals X over R and that's an x and the tangent of theta remember is the sine over the cosine it's that ratio which ends up just being opposite over adjacent or y over x so that seems to fit but because we're on a coordinate plane here we have the ability to extend this past acute angles that's right we're going to go past right triangles so <clears throat> how do we do that well, before we extend it, let's think about what we're really saying here. We're saying that sine, let's start with sine, of an angle is the ratio of y to r. But what does that mean? That means if there's some angle theta, which we've got right here, it's going to stop somewhere. We're saying you could put a point anywhere on that terminal line, and then you could say, well, sine is just the ratio of y, the y height of that point, so wherever that point is, it's just that height of the point to the distance as the ratio of that height to the distance from the origin to the point. That's what we're saying right here. And it seems like it, it works perfectly here for right triangles. But let's say in general then, forget the right triangle for a moment, sine is just the ratio of an angle. Sine of an angle is just the ratio of the height of a point on the terminal side to the distance to that point from the origin. Height to distance from the origin, and that's what sine is. And cosine is then the distance, the x distance to that point over the distance from the origin. And then tangent is just entirely based on that point. It's the ratio of the height of the point to the distance, to the, the x distance of the point right here. So it's really all about that point now and not just about triangles itself. So if I scroll over here, I think you'll see what I mean. Actually, let me do this, let me erase this. I don't want to clutter this diagram up. Is it okay if I clutter it up? Uh, I think it will be. All right. We will try to extend this without making a new diagram. Uh, no, no. Don't do that, Sean. It'll be too cluttered. Okay. All right. I'll make a clean diagram. Because what I want to do is I want to show you how this extends to angles that are not acute. So if I have a y-axis here and an x-axis here, let's say, and what about there's some angle? I don't know what it is precisely, but the terminal side is over here. It looks like 135 or so. Okay, so theta is now this angle. Well, we're trying out a new definition, and it's consistent so far with everything we know about right triangles. It doesn't seem to break anything, and you might want to break it. You might want to change the rules here, but I don't want to do that yet. I want to be consistent. We're saying we can pick a point here, P. I don't know where this point is, but it's going to have some x value and some y value. You might recognize already, well, x is going to be negative, that's true, and y is going to be positive. So what's the sign of this angle? Well, it is the ratio of the height of that point, so the height is here, it's going to be a right angle, y, over the distance of the origin here. And that's it. That's what the sign is. We're done. You want to know what the sign of this angle is? You take the height of that point to the distance of the origin. It's that ratio. What's the cosine? Well, it's the ratio of the x value. And we I've been saying distance, which is true, but we also want to acknowledge and kind of rethink what we're saying 
and say it's also the direction, isn't it? The direction matters. So it's the ratio of our x value, which is our distance and direction to our point P, and divided by the distance from the origin. So it's going to be this x value here, which is going to be a negative value. And then the tangent is just the ratio of the height of the point to the x value of the point, essentially. And that's it. We now have the ability to go past acute angles. You might also notice, though, that this fits so nicely with our previous definitions because we have the ability on the coordinate plane to still draw a right triangle. And you, of course, see it right here. So what does that mean? Well, for any angle theta, hey, we're looking at this angle, we can have another angle called a reference angle. That's theta hat. And what we can then do is think of the reference angle and the triangle it fits within, and just think how it relates to uh, a triangle in the first quadrant. So I'll show you an example, and we'll solve it in both ways. Let's say that theta is 135 degrees. And I said find a sine, cosine, tangent. What would you do? Well, let's erase that. We had to find the sine, cosine, tangent of a 135 degree angle. What you probably would do is think, well, okay, sine is the ratio of the height of the point to the x value of the point. So we've got to find the height of the point and the x value of the point. How do we do that? Well, this is where the reference angle certainly comes in handy, because if we notice here, I'm going to write below it. The reference angle, what does that equal? Well, that just equals 180 minus something, minus 135. And that's going to give you a 45 degree angle measurement. Why is that so useful? Because now we know that this triangle with the reference angle, even though it's not the triangle for our starting angle, right? this triangle will have the same height and distance from the origin um, that we would in the first quadrant. right? Or, so, or in general, in this case, it has the same height and distance from the origin as the point P. So it satisfies the definition of sine. We know that. So right, you can see it has the same height to P. It's built on that and distance from the origin. So that's going to tell us what the sine is. How do we do that? Well, in this case, if you remember for 45, 45, 90, I might say, well, the height can be thought of as 1. The x distance, the x value, excuse me, I keep saying distance. The x value is negative 1, right, because it's facing to the left. Then, based on the Pythagorean theorem, you could or use a shortcut for 45, 45, 90 is the, this distance right here is always a positive. It's the square root of 2. Now, we have all the information we need to answer all of these parts. We could say that the sine is y, which is 1 over the square root of 2, and we rationalize it by multiplying by square root of 2 over square root of 2, and that's our sine value. Cosine it's going to be the ratio of the x value to the r value, so it's negative 1 over the square root of 2, and that's going to get us the same thing except negative. By rationalizing, we get negative square root of 2 over 2. And the tangent, we're adding from there, is just going to be y over x, or negative 1. So let's just revisit what we're saying. When you define sine, cosine, and tangent on a coordinate plane, we do it by looking at the, a, a point on the terminal side and saying the sine is the ratio of the height of that point to the distance of the origin. The cosine is the ratio of the x value to the distance in the origin. And the tangent is just the ratio of y to x. And that fits perfectly with what we know about right triangles and beautifully extends it beyond right triangles by just looking at that point. All right, I hope that helped.